Um, oh, all right. By the way, I have all of your sessions. I'm sorry, what? Yes, I, I, I got your text on that. That's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm always going to assume that you have the first one. So you're my 430, and Anna will be my 5, unless you take both of them. Or she yeah. can take both of them, but just somebody let me know who that it's not you. I'm always going to assume you're the 430. Yeah. All right. So what are they starting you off with in second semester algebra? Um, I'll go to the website real quick just to check out. So we don't have a lot. Like, we literally have done almost nothing yet. Okay. Get on the teacher website right here. Uh-huh. Yeah, usually algebra, you, sh you should be able to verbalize most everything. Um, yeah. Until they start showing you graphs and want you to come up with the equation of that graph, yeah. then you'd need to send me a picture of it. Okay. But it's not like geometry. Geometry is almost impossible to do by verbalizing. Everything has to, I need a picture for virtually every problem. Well, now there's actually another way we can do this, and that is I can go to the website that you're going to right now. No, it's like a chain of websites that you have to go through to get to it. Okay. I can read you off one of the problems. You have to look the, up there. Yeah, if, as long as you can see the problems and be able to verbalize them, then we can make progress. Like, say, I say if it was a problem like x to the power of 7 over a... Power of what work here? Any any number works. Yeah, just like questions like that. Okay, let's talk about rules of exponents. Yeah. If I have the same base and I'm multiplying and I have two different exponents, then I add the exponent. In other words, if I had 2 to the 3 times 2 to the 4, what would that be? Um, would that be 4 to the... No. Well, be 2 to the 6, not 7. 7th. You add the exponents. When I'm multiplying the bases, I always do one less to the exponents. In other words, you never want to find yourself doing the same to the exponents as you're doing to the bases. Notice that I don't multiply the bases together. In other words, it's 2 to the 7th, not 4 to the 7th. Now, let's talk about division. If I have the same base and I'm dividing, then I subtract the exponents. So if I had 2 to the 4 divided by 2 to the 3, what would that be equal to? Uh, that would be uh, that'd be uh, 1. Uh-huh. Or just 2. Yeah. Okay. And there's really only one, yeah, there's one other major and that's where I'm exponentiating the base, and then I'm double exponentiating it, like that. Well, double exponentiation calls for multiplication. Okay, so if I had 2 to the 3, all in parentheses, to the 4, what would that be? Uh huh? Those are the three main situations. And those are probably going to cover most of the problems you deal with. There's another few, but we won't worry about those until I have a look at some of your problems here. So, if I'm doing this one, what's that? Uh, 
Next to the what? Next to the uh, No, subtract the exponents. Oh, oh, oh no, no, it is uh, X to the three. Okay. Here's here's the thing. When the bases are multiplying, let's go back and look at my three examples. When I'm multiplying the bases, I'm going to do one less thing mathematically to the exponents. I'm going to add them. Okay. When I'm dividing the bases. I'm going to do one less thing to the exponents, which is subtraction. In other words, yeah. notice that addition is one less thing than multiplication, and subtraction is one less thing than division. When I say one less thing, I mean mathematically speaking. Yeah. Never do the same thing to the exponents as you're doing to the base. That's the uh -huh. key. And then finally, the third case, well, here I'm doing double exponentiation. Well, what's one less than double exponentiation? Multiplication. Oh, okay. So that's the way to memorize it, is the exponents are always doing one less than what I'm doing to the base. That's multiplication, that's division, that's double exponentiation. All right, what other problems do you have? Um, I could try, I could pull some examples. That's, that's what we need. Actually, I, I could make some up, but I kind of hate to do that because there's varying degrees of difficulty, and I want to make sure that I'm working on the degree of difficulty that you're dealing with in class right now. I don't want to do harder, and I don't want to do easier. So the best way is for you to bring the problems to me. All right. I have to look them up on my phone. Okay. My computer is stopping. Okay. 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 Yeah, GoToMeeting is quite a computer hog. In other words, when you're running GoToMeeting, uh, your computer can't do a whole lot of other stuff at the same time. Okay. It's just asking too much of it. Um, yeah. So if you can pull up problems on your phone or some other tablet or something like that, that's probably the best way for you to get your problems. Or give me the combination of websites, and I'll go to those websites, and I'll pull them up, and we'll both be looking at them. Well, I got, I got them right now. Okay. What do you got? This one right here is just class on Oh, yeah, it's X7 over X5. Okay. What would that be? Uh, X. No, subtract. Subtract the exponents, so it's x squared. Yeah. Okay. What else? The next one is negative two a squared. P three. P. B. B to the third. Yeah. Okay. Over fourteen a b. And no parentheses anywhere? No parentheses. Okay. When you have problems that have numbers and various letters in them, you just always do them one at a time. Start with your numbers, and then start with A, and then go to B. And you could have 26 different letters in there, and it wouldn't make the problem any harder. Okay, as long as you do one at a time. Well, what's the numbers? What's minus 2 over 14 going to be? Uh, minus, no, yeah, minus 7. Well, minus 1 over 7. In other yeah. words, you have to keep it straight. It's not the same as 7. 14 divided by 2 is 7. But 2 divided by 14 is 1 7. Uh -huh. Okay. And the negative sign comes with it because we had negative 2 divided by 14. Now let's go to the A's. What's A squared divided by A? Um, it would next be A. Yeah, and momentarily we're going to put everything in the numerator. 
and then I'll show you how to handle it after that. I prefer to do this in two steps. What's b cubed divided by b to the fourth? b to the minus 1. Subtract yeah. the exponents. Okay? Now, usually on these problems, they say, give me all answers with positive exponents only. Right? Yes, they don't say that on this one. Well, let's get in the habit of doing it. Right. Okay, because you're they will. I'm not sure at what point, but they'll ask for all positive exponents. Now, I've got a negative exponent at the moment, but it's yeah. real easy to make that positive by just moving it to the other side of the fraction bar. So if I move that b down there to the 1, now I can erase it from the numerator. And I don't need the 1, and I don't need that 1. So that's my answer, minus a over 7b. And you could have gotten there one step quicker by realizing that b cubed over b to the fourth was b in the denominator. But it's really easier if you just follow the three rules of exponents that I gave you. You can't really go wrong on these as long as you do it step by step. Okay, what's the next one? The next question. Um, it's 3x to the negative 3. And then y to the power of 5. What do they want you to do with it? Um, simplify. Okay. Well, that's pretty simplified. The only yeah. thing it isn't is I've got a negative exponent. So when they say simplify, they mean give me nothing but positive exponents. So what happens to this? If I want to turn that x to the minus 3 into a positive exponent, what do I have to do with it? Um, do I have to here's, add, the, here's the rule. x to the minus 3 is the same as 1 over x to the positive 3. So negative exponents, in order to turn the exponent positive, is all you have to do is take it to the other side of the fraction bar. And it works both ways. Let's say I have 2 over x to the minus 3, like that. Well, I can take this x to the minus 3 and put it on the other side of the fraction bar so that I end up with that. And that's the same thing. So negative exponents are actually very easy to deal with. You just put them on the other side of the fraction bar. Okay? So this becomes 3, the y to the fifth stays in the numerator, and in the denominator I have this. And that's as simplified as you can make it. Okay. Now, that's assuming there were no parentheses, correct? Yeah. Because, let's talk about something for a moment. Okay. This is not the same. If I have 2x cubed and I have 2x cubed, those are not the same thing. Yeah. In the upper one, the cubed applies to the 2 and the x. So that becomes 8x cubed. And in the lower one, the 3 applies only to the x, not to the 2, because it's not inside parentheses. So that stays 2x cubed. So that's why parentheses are extremely important when you're dealing with exponents. So if you see any, make sure you say parentheses, because okay. it'll matter to the answer. All right, what else you got? Um, this one is a, so it's 2a over b squared, and it's all in parentheses to the power of 3. 3? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about two other rules of exponents. All right. 
if I have A over B cubed, I can always separate that into A cubed over B cubed. Yeah. Same thing. Also, if I have A times B quantity cubed, I can always separate that into A cubed times B cubed. Okay. Those are the only five rules of exponents you're ever going to need. These two, right. these two, and the first three. The difference between these two is that it's the same exponent, different base, right? A is not the same as B, whereas in the first three rules, we always had the same base, whether we were multiplying, dividing, or double exponentiating, it was always the same base. Well, sometimes you don't have the same base, like this problem you just gave me. Yeah. So... Let's first of all split it up into 2a, and I do need to put parentheses around that, okay. divided by b squared cubed also. So that's my first step. Now, okay. what's quantity 2a cubed equal to? Uh. Well, I can split that up into 2 cubed times A cubed. Uh, okay. What's 2 cubed? Yeah. 2 times 2 times 2. Oh, no. That's 8. Okay. So the numerator is 8A cubed. And now in the denominator, I got double exponentiation going on. So what do I do to the exponents? Yep, and that's as simplified as I can make it. I can do nothing else. In other words, because this is an A and this is a B, I can't do anything with A cubed over B to the sixth. They're not yeah. the same base, and they're not the same exponent. So I can't really do anything with the exponents. If they were the same exponent, I could maybe simplify it a little bit. Okay. All right. What else? Um, what um, is Notice this is the same thing as this. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Times 3y. I left off the 3y. Yeah. Okay. So, let's handle the numerator first. What's that become? And the denominator? Um, 6y cubed. Okay, now I can reduce the 2 over 6. What's that become? Um, it becomes 3. 1 third? Yeah, 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this whole thing simplifies to this. Now I have a situation where I have the same exponent. So if I wanted to, I could make that look like this. But there's no real reason to do it. It doesn't help matters. It's kind of like factoring something when it's already fully simplified. So there's nothing wrong with that answer right there. You don't need to apply that last rule where different bases, same exponent, you need to write it like this. You don't. It is the same thing, but it's not necessarily considered a simplification, not unless your teacher has told you to always make that step. Okay. All right. What else? Uh, 
We got to be. Or not to be. No, go ahead. Uh, over Q squared. Q? Yeah. Times 2Q. Over B squared. Okay. Yeah. Do the numbers first. Um, we have um, we have are we just finding the numerator right now? Two times two is four. That goes in the numerator. Yeah. Okay. Now do the B's next. What's B divided by B squared? b to the minus 1. In other words, if you apply the rules of exponents, you're subtracting exponents. So you're doing 1 minus 2. Okay. Now the q's. Um, for the numerator, I'm going to put everything in the numerator in this first step. What would be q? And then the, yeah. q the to the minus 1 again. Okay, now I'm ready to simplify that and put everything with positive exponents. So what does this all become? Um, four. Now hold on. The 4 stays in the numerator, but the b to the minus 1 goes to the denominator with a positive 1. And the q to the minus 1 goes to the denominator with a 1. And I don't write the 1, so there's the answer. 4 over bq. Four over BQ. Notice that is all I do is I come up with either positive or negative exponents as my first step always, and then I move them to the side of the fraction bar where they will have positive exponents always. So I don't really ever want to give the answer like this, although it's the same answer as this. It's just usually you will have instructions saying, put your answers with all positive exponents, not negative exponents. Okay. All right, what else? Um, we have three and cubed. N to the fifth? Yeah. Okay. Over 2MN squared. Like that? Yeah. No parentheses anywhere? No parentheses. Okay, I'll do the number first. What's the number part going to be? Um, the number part is going to be... 3 over 2. I cannot simplify that any. And I go ahead and draw the fraction bar because I know I'm going to need one because I've already got a 3 over 2. So there's no way anything ends up entirely in the numerator or denominator. Okay. How about the M? What M do we have? We have m, we got an m to the third divided by an m to the first. What do you do with the exponents? You subtract them. So what is it? m to the m squared. Okay, and that's in the numerator. And I, in other words, I'm always writing it in the numerator, whether it has a positive or a negative exponent, and then I'll put it on the correct side of the fraction bar afterwards. How about the ends? I'm sorry, I can't hear? To the third. N to the third. Yeah. And I've got all positive exponents. That's my answer. All right. Now, it's important to know that I could have written it like this. They're the same thing. Yeah. Okay. What else? Um, oh, man. Alright, so 
but this one is like so it's two b squared. And if there's parentheses, make sure you sit, tell me. Yeah, there's not. Okay. Uh, C cubed over B squared C. Okay. Do the numbers first. Two. I'm not going to draw a fraction bar because I might not need one. What's B squared over B squared? Okay, so I don't need to write that. What's C cubed over C? Um, C squared. There's my answer. I don't need a fraction bar. If I had one, I'd put one there. But you never need the one when it's the only thing in the denominator. If it's the only thing in the numerator, you always need the one. In other words, if I said c to the minus 4, I got to have that 1 there. I can't not put it in. It's okay. It's different when it's in the numerator as opposed to the denominator. If it's the only thing in the numerator, you need it. If it's the only thing in the denominator, you don't need it. Okay, what else? Um, this one is Two y to the fifth power over y cubed. Okay, the number? Uh, the number is two. What's the rest of it? What? What's the rest of it? Um, y squared. Okay, and there you go. Don't need a fraction bar again. Now, let's make it y to the seventh, okay? okay? Now, the 2 is still in the numerator, but I'm going to end up with y to the minus 2 when I subtract 5 minus 7. And now, that means I'm going to have a fraction bar. So, the 2 stays in the numerator, and the y goes to the denominator like that. Okay. All right, what else? Um, the next one is parentheses. X squared. Y, Z. Parentheses squared. Over parentheses X, Y, Z. Like that? Well, the x, y, z is squared too. Or the z is squared. In the bottom? Yeah. Only in the bottom? In other words, like that? Yeah. All right. Um, there's always a couple of ways you can go, and one is not particularly faster than another. I like to do my double exponentiations first. So let's do all the numerator. What's the new numerator based on that? Um, that square applies to the x squared, the y, and the z. Okay, so the x um, y. Hold on. Double exponentiation. What do I do to the exponents? Multiply. Oh, yeah. You do one level less. Well, there's not very many levels less double exponentiation, but multiplication. Right. Okay. What about in the numerator for y? Um, well, the y. y squared, right? In other words, there's a 1 right there, and there's a 1 right there. So, again, is all I'm doing is multiplying the exponents. 
No, z squared also. Unless I unless I wrote the problem down wrong. Okay. Now let's look at the denominator. Now let's apply the double exponentiation to each variable in the denominator. What do I have in x's? Um, x would be each variable would be x to the uh, eight. No, hold on. There's a one right there. You're only oh, looking at the denominator. Okay. What about the y? Um, y would be y squared. Yes. Because there's a one there. I got to multiply that two times the one. And what about the z? Would be to the fourth. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Now let's keep going. Now let's handle one letter at a time. What's the x to the fourth over x squared equal to? Uh, equal to x squared. Okay. What is y squared over y squared? Y. No, it's 1. Any number divided by itself is always 1. If it was y cubed over y squared, that would be y. In other words, I would yeah. subtract the exponents. But when I subtract the exponents here, I get 0, right? So it's really yeah. y to the 0th power, but any number to the 0th power is 1. So I'm not going to write it. I'll write it like that for a moment. How about the z's? The z's are z to the negative. Okay, now simplify all of that. What do I end up with? Um, with x, x y over... There's no y anymore. This becomes 1. Oh, so x squared over uh, b. z squared. Right? We, we had a z to the minus 2. So if I'm going to move that to the other side of the fraction bar, it's, the exponent stays the same. You just lose the negative sign. Yeah. Okay. And again, now I got two different bases but the same exponent. If I wanted, if you had maybe a multiple choice, and this was one of the multiple choices, that's what you'd pick. In other words, those two expressions are the same at the very bottom. But it's not particularly necessary to, to go all the way to the right. That, that, you don't have to simplify it that far, like I said, unless your teacher specifically wants you to. I would consider this a perfectly fine answer. Okay, what else? Um, the next one is 5 times 3 to the negative 1. Just that? Yeah. Okay. Give me it all with positive exponents. I'm giving you two it like that. Well, in other words, the 5 already has a positive exponent. So it stays in the numerator. What about the 3 to the negative 1? How would that be 3? There's your answer. Assuming there were no parentheses involved. Yeah. Okay. And the last one is a uh, parentheses negative two. Parentheses negative two? Yeah. Okay. Negative one. Hold on. One. I didn't hear after the negative two. Yeah, that's after the negative two. That's the parentheses. What is it? Negative one. Oh, no. It, it's not... It's, it's not its own like, number. It's like Let's we'll start one. start from the beginning. Uh, so, negative 2. No parentheses? No, there are parentheses around negative 2. Entirely around that, like that? 
No, but the negative two is uh, the negative first power. Ah, like this. Yeah. Okay. And then all that is negative two. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Have I written it exactly the way? Yes. Okay. okay. Well, the negative 2 exponent applies to everything inside the parentheses. So it applies to the negative sign, and it applies to the 2 to the minus 1. Okay. You might think that I could make this a lot cleaner by just multiplying minus 2 times minus 1 and putting negative 2 to the 2 power. But that doesn't really handle the negative sign. In other words, if I had a problem like this, then all I would do is just multiply exponents. Bingo. Done. But the negative sign makes it a little more complicated because that minus 2 applies to the negative sign also. So let's, well, let me think what we can do here. Let's take what's inside the parentheses, first of all, and turn that in to 1 over negative 2. That's the same thing as what's in the parentheses. And now, if I take all of that to the negative 2 power, well, that's the same as 1 to the negative 2 divided by negative 2 to the negative 2. So all I'm doing is separating stuff out. What is 1 to the negative 2 equal to? 1 to the negative 2 is equal to 1 squared. 1 to any power, positive or negative, is 1. Yeah. 1 to the 27th power is 1. 1 to the minus 27th power is 1. So that numerator stays at 1. Uh -huh. Now, this denominator got a negative exponent, let's just put it in the numerator. So it's still negative 2, but now it's to the 2 power instead of the negative 2 power. You with me? Yeah. Now proceed. What's negative 2 quantity squared? Uh, positive 2. What's minus 2 times minus 2? That's positive 4. Uh-huh. There's your answer. All right. Now, I would have gotten that even if I'd have done this the wrong way. And it's because when you have a negative sign and you're taking it to a power, if the power is an even number, it always negates the negative sign. If the power is an odd number, then it stays negative. In other words, here's what I'm trying to say. Negative 2 to the 4th power is the same as 2 to the 4th power. Negative 2 to the 3rd power is the same as negative 2 to the 3rd power. In other words, when you take a negative and you do negative times negative times negative, it comes out negative. But if you take a negative and you do it, multiply it by itself an even number of times, it always comes out positive. Okay. So had I realized that, I actually could have taken a shortcut here, multiplied those two together, disregard the negative sign because I know it's going away, and immediately get 2 squared. In other words, I can get there really quick if I know that little trick. But if you're not familiar or if you're not confident about those kind of things, do it the hard way. I did it the hard way. I wrote what was inside in the proper way and then I applied the minus 2 
and then I split it up into a numerator to the minus 2 and a denominator to the minus 2 and so forth and so on. So there are some shortcuts on some of these that you can take, but they're a little dangerous when they involve negative signs. You've got to be really careful. Okay, what else? Okay. That's pretty good. Um, maybe we'll just do a 45-minute session today. Does that work? No. Okay. Only because I am jammed up until 8.30 continuously, so I can use a little bit of wiggle room between now and my 5.30 that's coming up. So yeah. I don't mind cutting it short. And if you don't have any more problems to do, let's just uh, call it a 45-minute session. Okay, uh, Nick, I will talk to you next, what is this, Wednesday? <laughs> next Wednesday at 4.30. All righty. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.